Happy new computer day for Matt Donato. New computer day, yeah. I did you did. get it today? No, I got it last week. Okay. Um, I got it last like Saturday, I think, or maybe even, like, yeah, because I didn't have it for last live stream. Um, I heard yeah. you just opened a drink. You keep that drink far away from that new laptop. <laughs> it's fine. Y'all, y'all blowing that out of proportion. No, <laughs> food and drink near a laptop is not blowing anything out of proportion, but I'm very happy you have a machine that will give you multiple windows and won't freeze up and be sticky. It's incredible how like crisp and clear you look. What, so like literally the fact that I, so I'm using an actual like camera for my setup. So like, it's, you know, it's any like live stream setup and I have a full camera view, HDMI, all that stuff. And literally the fact that my last computer couldn't even process the camera, let mm. alone run everything with it. And now I have like, all my windows, it, I just feel so like comfortable and like, I can just do whatever I want. I can go research something right now and my computer yeah. won't crash. It's crazy. There's a big difference. It's about time. I'm glad it finally happened. What else? What else you've been up to? It's an AMA episode. We could talk about whatever we want. Uh, I, as, as we talked about prior, I did my first on camera <laughs> review for IGN, a uh, little, little on camera review for uh, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey 2. That was weird. Talking into a camera is weird with no one else there. Teleprompters are awesome, but weird. I'm sharing I'm hands. sharing it in the chat right now. So everybody goes and watches it because it's good. It's good. You did it, was good a, like, it was a very cool process because like I'm used to doing this stuff. Like live stream does not, that doesn't bother me. Like talking to you, talking to other people and just like going off the cuff. Easy. I like, I, I live for this, but the minute I like got on stage, let's say, or like into the area and it was just me standing there in front of a camera and they were like, go. And I was like, Oh, I like I'm I'm it. Like this is everything's on me now. Cool. All right. It's not easy, like especially no. because like it's a lengthy script to be reading off a prompter. So I get well, it. And and so the the thing I can't talk about yet that is also very cool. But the night before, I also did another first, and that was my first. It's it's a video essay that's going to be right. included in something that will be released soon, and it was like 18, 19 minutes worth of recording or sorry like the actual recording was 18 19 minutes so it was like a 2300 word script so like that was my first diving into the whole audio recording like voice recording stuff as a narrator and that took me a while just to get used to it but it was a good warm-up because i got used to finally reading out loud mm -hmm. so when i got in the next day to ign studios and i was like okay i feel a little better <laughs> a little more comfortable you seem pretty comfortable in the finished video and that's all that matters thank you Ho hopefully more we'll see you know Job very well done. Job very well done. We already have some some super chats. <laughs> My K is first up. Happy uh, Good Friday, everyone. I'm looking forward to Jurassic World Chaos Theory, but first I need to finish the last three seasons of Camp Cretaceous. You're lucky, Mike, because that's a really yeah, good Cretaceous. binge to have to do. Cretaceous is fun, and like it gets it gets weirdly heavy towards the end. I mean, it's, it a, good it's a good balance of like kids show, but also treating the material mm -hmm. with the heft that it deserves. Like... That's what I always say about that particular show. I also feel like at the beginning of its run, the animation style threw me off where mm -hmm. like that alone made me think that it was going to be, you know, maybe a little more kid friendly than what I would appreciate. But I, re I really do think the animation wound up serving the material well and it looked really good. And then also as far as the story goes, like. There's the fun of kids being on an adventure in Jurassic yeah. World, but like it's dark and scary and like truly perilous. Yeah. I mean, like it's a Jurassic Park property or sorry, Jurassic World property through and through. But Same the sense thing. that like, you know, like the, there's no gore on camera or anything like that. There's no violence on camera, but you still get everything like all the implications are there. You know, the terrible things that the dinosaurs are doing to people like, yeah. I am very, very excited for Chaos Theory. <laughs> like the this. um. This trailer, as though I couldn't be more hyped for a new Jurassic yeah. thing, this trailer legit upped my hype. You've watched it. Uh yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah, I like it's it's good. I, I'm I'm reserving until the, the series comes out because like there were parts of um the last one, Camper Cretaceous, that like a lot of it worked for me, some of it didn't. So I want to see what carries over into chaos theory. It didn't accept, like, I, I'm surprised you're not more enthused by the idea that, like, all of the surviving characters 
are likely coming back for this. Oh no, I, I do love that. Yes, I mean, like, I'm still waiting for the live action versions of them in oh, some well. capacity. Like, I, I, I really like that idea. But if you're gonna build this world, let's say, of like animated Jurassic World properties, and you know, we're gonna have a connect uh, interconnectivity there. Like, yeah, no, I'm excited for it. It's, you know, it's still just, it's, it's what it is. It's still its own contained property. And like, like I said, there's some stuff I didn't like about uh, Chaos or uh, Camp Cretaceous. So. I mean, it's contained, but it also is woven so well in into the the film franchise and that narrative. I yeah. like, I was really excited when I just thought Chaos Theory was going to focus on Darius as he got older mm -hmm. and you know processed life after what he had been through and what the world has turned into. I was so excited when like Ben pops up in this trailer yeah. and he teases that they're going to have to find all the others. Yeah. I mean, that that to me signals that chaos theory could maybe be what I want the film franchise to be, where it's about, you know, adapting to life with dinosaurs yeah. and they just have like those added skill sets in their back pocket, but also like. I would have to imagine if they're going to find them all going to different parts of, of the country or maybe the world and seeing how their life has adjusted in maybe a unique way, which is always what I wanted the film franchise to dig into. So yeah. maybe chaos theory will give me that. I'm going to watch it all. There's no doubt I will. So like, yeah, like obviously like what I did, any hype and excitement is based on what I've seen already and what I know they can probably get done. Uh, and again, I do like the idea that they're bringing people back. Just, mm. I just want to see where it goes in this time. And I hope it is what you said. I hope it is the exploration of living with dinosaurs and what Jurassic World missed in that whole time gap, the time yeah. gaps they do. Like, God, that fucking, I defend two of three Jurassic World movies, but I'm still so pissed at that trilogy as a whole, being like all the missed opportunities there, because like there are so many fucking whiffs in the sense of stuff they pass over that should have been a movie in itself. Well, the whiff is Dominion. And, you well, know, and, that's well, the big whiff from... is Dominion. Yeah. I like I did enjoy Dominion and when I rewatch it, I still enjoy it. And I still think that there were a lot of like good ideas in it. But like the obvious path for that franchise to pursue would have been Jurassic World crashes and burns. They dumbly take the dinosaurs off the island. They break out of the mansion and they're out in the world that like it literally was built into the title that they created from the start of this new trilogy. Then Jurassic World. But no, let's not do Jurassic World. Let's do Biosyn. And like, I like Biosyn stuff yeah. from the from the books. But like, I didn't want the third movie in that trilogy to be reduced to that campus and that campus alone. Well, not alone. But well, not, not alone, but like largely again. Like yeah. The focus was there. And Missed um, opportunities. yeah, I mean, yeah. The other Jurassic thing with the. um. The other thing with the Chaos Theory trailer, though, is I do I do think that they're going to explore life with dinosaurs in a variety of areas throughout the uh, throughout the world. But there is also that mention of them each being hunted. So there there likely will be like the nefarious yeah. organization part of the plot. And, you know, like I think parts of that were, were strong in Camp Cretaceous. Mm -hmm. But like that's the kind of stuff that sometimes would miss the mark for me. So I'm yeah. curious to see what kind of narrative they spin up in that department this time. Yeah, that's kind of what I was alluding to, too. And the stuff that didn't work for me as well. 100% that. All right. Next one. Mike says... Some crazy, absurd stuff happens in Godzilla Kong. How would you want to see them top themselves in the next one? I assume they tee up a next one. Um, I, I mean, can I say off the bat, there's no extra credits tease? Like, there's no oh, yeah, credits. That's there's not nothing. So, like, we we sat through the whole credits, got to the end, nothing like that. So, like, I not really. It ends at a really... So, here's the thing. For me, the where it ends is a really good... We've told our story. Mm -hmm. Like we, we've done everything we want to do with these movies um, because like you get everything of, you get the fighting until this point, you get the massive team up, you get these big moments. And honestly, like I'd be okay if this was it. I know there are more like Wingard said, he has like two more movies plotted in his head. I think he's got two sequels alone. So like, this is totally dependent. And Wingard said out loud, like if this movie makes enough money, we'll probably do a sequel. But I mean, what would you want to see them do in the next one to top themselves? Like, you've already had them team up. You've already had them team up in a way that has involved other characters, let's say. Um, so like they use a lot of big momentous kind of fan moments, let's say like fan favorite moments that people are probably going to like if you're like a super fan. So I, how do you top yourself in the next one? I mean, you have to go bigger. 
but like we've done mecha already in the monster verse we've done certain things there has to be like like it had like like there has to be a even bigger fight somehow and there's a big fight in this one so that's that's a lot to think of yeah i I haven't seen Godzilla Kong, obviously. I'll see it eventually. I think at this point I'm going to have to watch it at home just because I'm not going to have time to see it in theaters yeah. any anytime soon. But like I, I'm entertained by those movies, but I don't love them. So the thought of Adam Wingard, you know, potentially doing two more, and I know that's just something like a comedy throughout. It's not yeah. necessarily a thing that's going to happen, but like, I want him to go and like make an original horror movie or something. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but like the, the other thing too is like I think it was Jason Eisner who uh, hobo with a shotgun, like yeah. friends, friends of the Wingard forever. Like his reaction to the movie was tweeting out like Adam has been talking about making a movie focused on Godzilla and Kong for like his entire life. Like the dude loves this franchise, so like I know there is this like mm. it's the whole Ty West of it all in a way where it's like, hey, stop making television and come back to make a horror movie. But like Ty West was done with making movies. Like in a valley of violence broke mm. him. He he didn't want to make another movie, and that's why he did television. So like we also have to think of the creators in these points because like I I do too I would love Wingard to come back and make another year next or something of that nature or like you know doing his equivalent to Ready or Not like that Radio Silence did but he he loves this shit like this is where he wants to be so like if he's gonna be passionate about telling more Godzilla Kong movies I'm into it because I liked I mean, a lot of I liked a lot of what I saw on Godzilla vs Kong people are down on it but like I think it's fun. That's, I mean, that's true. I think first and foremost, whatever the filmmaker wants to do and feels driven to do is what's going to produce the best possible results. But well, and, and I, want an, also, I want another yeah. year next. I even want another Blair Witch. I think their Blair Witch movie. Their Blair Witch is good. Like, it's, it's legitimately good. And people yeah. just, like, ripped it apart. Like, respect to anyone who just has a different opinion than me. I get it. But, like, I do feel like that movie in particular got, like, unfairly ripped to shreds upon i think that movie unfortunately came out at a wrong time uh because it kind of came on the back end of like found footage itself being this like huge let's say movement uh and like people were done with found footage at that point like people didn't want to see it that's not i mean everyone always says they're done with something but then someone does it well and it's fine like i i don't know i don't know if you could blame it on the time and i know some people blame blame the the reveal of what the movie was that like they teed it up as the yeah. woods and we're going to get something original like that didn't even I don't even think that really had that big of an impact on on the like the audience and critic scores because like the only the only people who actually got to experience that reveal were the ones at Comic-Con and then everyone rolled into the release knowing it was another Blair Witch movie. But I don't know. Yeah. The only thing that makes any sense to me is people went in there with like certain expectations of a Blair Witch movie and these just like didn't meet them. But one well, way or the other, I think what they delivered is quality. Yeah, like, like complaints I saw at the time were like, oh, that drone scene is so dumb. But like, no, it's not. Like they're actually, they found a way to make a Blair Witch movie with modern technology. And I think that's actually pretty cool. Like using the drone, using those like elements I thought made it more authentic for mm. the contemporary time period. But I mean, like there is a thing with movements though, in the same sense that like Hereditary and Relic and all these movies were the first of the trauma horror, big air quotes, like, you know that whole thing, elevated horror, whatever you want to fucking call it, where like everyone was really high on that for a while. But now we're at the point where like, you know, that that has that movement has kind of dropped off a little bit. And we finally hit the point where <laughs> people are done with it. So like I think found footage absolutely hit a wall at one point and people just didn't want to see it. Something like M. Night Shyamalan's The Visit too. Like The, visit, the visit. I it's great. Like the visit's great. And a bunch of people now talk about it as like honestly like one of his better movies. But like at the time I feel like the visit still got a positive response, though. It did. It, it, well, I mean, it's got a sixty-eight on Rotten Tomatoes, so Does that's it? still fairly positive. What is the audience score on it? Mm. I did not look at that. I figured you were on that page while I was. I, I just was, but I clicked off. I'll, so, I'll like go. Blair Witch, the woods mm -hmm. turned Blair Witch has a tomato meter score of thirty-eight yep. percent and an audience score of thirty-one percent. The visit has a fifty-two audience. That's wild to me. That's I, wild. Like, Found footage is not a liked genre, but well, su sorry, subgenre. Like it is not beloved and it has its defenders, obviously. Mm -hmm. But like I'll go to bat for a lot of found footage movies. I think they're a lot better than people give them credit for, but people just don't want to see that. Like Cloverfield was a huge failure for my friends. Like 
I took like six six of my friends to go see Cloverfield. I walked out. I'm like, that was one of the best things ever. And they all looked at me. They're like, that was one of the best movies I've ever seen. Because like they all hated it. They all absolutely hated it. The I mean, the crazy thing is, you know what? Um, Late Night with the Devil is partially a found footage movie. So there. I like found footage a lot. Yeah, I like found footage. I'll I'm quick to criticize found footage where it does feel like it's um. Absolutely. Using the the format without much purpose or without adding anything or without saying anything with it for that matter. But I feel I feel like most people out there know the difference now. Like I think that probably after Cloverfield and Blair Witch, there was probably more movies that misused it. But I feel like there's a lot of smart genre filmmakers out there who know they have to do something different with it. I mean, there are, but there still are a lot of dog shit found footage movies. I mean, like that I, hasn't. You clearly I, watch more than yeah, that I do. I can, I can promise you there are still found footage movies being churned out. And like, there's this one that just came out, Frogman. And like, it's actually kind of Oh cool. yeah, I saw that poster. Yeah. Like, it's actually kind of cool. That actually is an example of huh. a decently inventive way to use it. But there's still like, I mean, I could scroll back in my letterbox diary the last three years and point out fucking 20 just shot in their backyard. Like, found footage just needs a camera. Like, I, the quality in found footage to me is one of the most like, there's like a grand Canyon between like good and bad Mm -hmm. where like, I don't think there's that many like middle of the road found footage movies. Either they're really well done. Like you said, like they understand the format so well or some like fucking kid in his backyard took a camcorder and 20 bucks and is like, I made a horror movie. Like, yeah. yeah. (laughs) Have you ever tried to make a found footage movie? Fuck no. I just like, I just remember going to the, uh, the walking dead escape and all I would Mm want to do is like, like film my POV as I'm going through it. Like it's fucking hard. Like in yeah. reality, in reality, if this ever happened to someone and they were like Cloverfield style running through Manhattan with yeah. a timer in their hand, that footage would be unfucking watchable. Yeah. And like an interesting question from Walt K. Walton at just the last comment. Sorry, I don't, I'm not signed in yet. So I, can't I was click. wondering. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah like, I mean, like yeah. that's also the cool thing. Well, like, Found footage, but also th- that screen life. So, screen like, life, yeah. Ser- Searching was one of the first movies to adopt screen life. Uh, I think there's a movie, Nacho Vigalando's Open Windows, was actually one of the mm. first. Like, oh un- my God, I forgot about that. Yeah, that was open- good. Open Windows, uh, un- Unfriended, I think, was probably yes. like the first, but like around that, like, Camp to Cam came out. Mm. Like, there's a, there were a bunch of movies that adopted that. So, like, once we start talking about like screens, that becomes screen life. And like, there is a difference. The Den, the Den is one of my mm. favorite screen life movies. And that was, 2013 i want to say like that was that was literally one of the ogs and like not enough people talk about that mm-hmm. one that's real good even the um even the unfriended sequel is quite good dark web so yeah, dark web unfortunately i am very down on that but really yeah that, that, one, it, that one impressed me i saw it at uh south by with christy and, and me and christy walked out and we're like oh that was awful and like we were the only people that didn't like it like uh, I, I literally said to jacob hall and he's like i'm writing the review and i'm like yeah go for it have fun because he's oh, like, you're, wow. not, you're not saying that on Slash Film. I liked it. I liked it. I'm I'm experiencing that with another movie that just came out where, like, I think that there's, like, something wrong with me that I didn't like. Every Something that everyone is just, like, gushing over right now. We'll get into that on a future episode of The Merry Hour. Yeah. Um, next up, we did Godzilla Kong. I think this is, uh, yeah, Wiley. Since um, movie season is slow right now, I've been catching up on TV. Currently watching The Crown, and it's great. What are you catching up on? Congrats, Matt. Thank you. Um, um, I don't know if I'm catching. So if I'm catching up on anything, it's Next Level Chef. Uh, it's my fucking cooking shows because, like, that is my happy place. Mm. Um, Next Level Chef fucking rules. It's It's basically the platform. But Gordon, like Gordon Ramsay watched the platform. He's like, I can make a cooking show out of this. And he did. So fucking it's great. Um, there's this new one that involves poker. Uh, and it's like a Food Network show. And like a chef brings his three friends in and they bet on who can make the best dish with like wild card ingredients they're given. It's actually kind of cool. I forget what the name of that one is. Uh, but yeah, right. Especially right now, post South by looking into like maybe a lull but also like not really a lull because we're coming up in the summer movie season uh right now it's just comfort watches but like that that's maybe not even new stuff just like give me stuff that i just want to rewatch or just like lay on the couch and binge to Mm, that sounds kind of nice um right now i am watching an upcoming title that i can't talk about i'll tease that it comes out in mid-april though because i'm doing some interviews for it soon 
The thing that I can tell you that I've been re-binging is, is Rick and Morty, just because I have a, a Q&A to moderate coming up for that. And, like, I just will take an excuse. Yeah. To, and it's, it, like, it's, I find it, like, really relaxing. Like, I know there's a lot of, like, like high-stress, like, high-pressure adventures yeah, that they no. go on, but... Like, man, to be able to get in bed after a long day of work and just, like, pop on a couple of episodes of Rick and Morty just, like, really it's puts easy me watch. at ease. Yeah. All right. We have next up is World of Devin. Hey, Perry, thoughts on Bad Boys 4 trailer? I didn't watch it. Did you watch it? I didn't watch it either. I don't not like bad boys, but I don't love, love, love it like many do. So I feel like I'm not always quick to to push play yeah. on the latest trailers. I feel like like someone back in the Collider days was obsessed with it. It was definitely either McCougar or Ellis, but one of them loved the last movie. I don't even I never even saw the last movie. Bad Boys I, I heard it was good. I heard it was good. Uh it just wasn't yeah. We have Sam here. First time in a while that I've been able to watch live. Happy to have you here. Curious um, what you guys think. Oh, the musical numbers in Joker. I was reading about this being covers of original songs. Do you prefer one over the other? I don't, I don't care as long as it's good. And like with someone like Lady Gaga involved, I have to imagine that if she's going to cover something, she's going to make sure it's got like purpose and value and it's good. Yeah, I, 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 same thing. I have no problem with any method, but it's how it's done. It's how the execution is. Like, I, like in the sense of, uh, do you prefer one of the over, like, blah, 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 being covers over original, original songs? Like, well, if it's a musical, though, it's never really an original song, right? It would, well, I get, no, I get, okay. I'm, I'm mixing it up in my head. I got it now. But no, I'm totally fine with being covers because if you bring a new energy and a new composition to a song that I know already, it's the same. It's, it's why I love fucking remakes of movies. Like if you do something in a different way in, in a movie, like I fucking love that. So hmm. same thing, same concept for me <laughs> musically. There's also a possibility that like the narrative will support them being covers and not originals, if that makes any sense. I'm curious if that's yeah. how things pan out. Well, I, I think it actually is in like somebody actually did get into the story elements of it. And like that, there is a point that it, that yeah. it is. <laughs> I would have to imagine. Um, Devin has another bad boys question. I feel so terrible that I can't answer it. What's your mm -hmm. favorite bad boys movie in order and why? I I cannot answer because I haven't seen the last one. That, that is unfortunate. Yeah, we're think, we're we're at a loss for you, Devin. I'm so sorry. I think first still best though, if it, like of what I've seen. So I guess so. I mean, yeah, I would have to say the same. <laughs> um, next up, did you see any that you liked? <clears throat> any what? Any chats? I'm just looking. See that the final destination cast. I don't oh, like. Yeah. I, don't really, I don't really know many of them. Obviously, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna be very honest. They're just... all uh, younger television stars, it seems. But um, I'm gonna okay. bring I feel like there was someone that I maybe knew. I yeah, know, I, know my, I know my Chucky. I know my Chucky star. So that that's that's one I do know. And like, yeah, I like him. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely like a younger, a younger batch, like yeah. a batch that could probably be elevated by being part of a major uh, horror franchise like this, which like it, it excites me. When we were talking mm -hmm. about on uh, Collider Dailies, we were talking about uh, Scarlett Johansson join, potentially joining the cast of Jurassic. Like one thing that I said was like, cool, now you have your famous headliner, fill yeah. the rest of the ensemble with like somewhat lesser known people who could, you know. I like first and foremost deliver really good performances, but also you know use this opportunity as a, a stepping stone to be uh, standing in a bigger spotlight than they they might have been otherwise, um, and that's you know that's part of the reason why I love these movies. I feel I feel like if you go through all the Final Destination ensembles, a lot of them were, I mean maybe less so five now that I'm thinking about it, but a lot of them were in positions where. Yeah. Being in a Final Destination movie was a big deal, and they've gone on to do really great things since. Yeah, and I mean, like that's that's horror movies in general. Like, like you you pick a more unknown cast. Like, you're not you don't really have to spend the money on big name stars because it's a horror movie, and like people are there for the concept more than the actual cast. I would say than any other genre. Somewhat, I feel like more more so than ever, we're seeing like the opposite happen though. Like where I like I don't know why this is the first movie that came to my mind, but like where like Finn Wolfhard and like Mackenzie Davis weren't they in the turning? 
Oh God. Like, or or even like um like Andrea Riseborough in the grudge. Like I, yeah. I do think we're getting like a lot of horror movies with big name people attached. Well, I mean the conjuring. <laughs> I mean like that's Patrick well, Patrick Wilson fucking yeah. Conjuring's on its own on its own level. Yeah, I mean like, it, but it still, you know, the first one it didn't have the actual popularity it has now. That was just a James Bond horror movie yeah. and like uh, it was the beginning, you know, the beginning stages of Joey King's career. So, like, they did yeah. that. They had their, you know, I mean, well, they had a big ensemble. They had their Vera Farmiga, their Patrick Wilson, their uh, Lily Taylor. Yeah. And then, the, you know, the kids were a bit newer. But I'm, I'm really excited. <laughs> Josh Hartnett and Joseph Gordon-Levitt and Halloween H2. I mean, like, we could go back and pick some. Um, how about the entire cast of um, the faculty? The faculty at the time, yeah. Fucking uh, Paul Rudd in the Halloween franchise. Yeah, you can go back and and, and cherry pick some uh, fun names from horror franchises. And um, Clooney and Sheen and uh, Matthew, Laura McCon Byrne. Matthew McConaughey and um, McConaughey. and um, oh my fucking Renee, God. Renee, Zell Renee Zellweger. Renee Zellweger in Texas uh, Chainsaw four. Next Generation. Yeah. Next Generation? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm surprised I pulled that title. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited that casting is happening for final destination because that means like like shit's moving now you know and it's yeah. in it's in production it's in production in vancouver right now so i'm just excited that you know more information will likely be released now and that it's like really happening and that hopefully we'll we'll see something soon I well really i mean something soon andrew just brought up tatiana maslani and like you saw the the monkey announcement right the what announcement the monkey um, maybe I did. I feel like I saw something, but didn't read the whole article. Yeah, so, like, Oz Perkins already shot, without anyone knowing, a Stephen King adaptation. And the cast is... Oh, yeah, cool. I did see this. I did see this. Um, Tatiana, Elijah Wood, uh, Rohan Campbell, Colin O'Brien, Sarah Levy. But, like, just going down, like, it's just a cool fucking... Like, like the fact that he was able to shoot a movie without anyone knowing and then a Stephen King adaptation, especially. And like now it's like, yeah, filming's done already. We're just we're, we're just working towards the release. There's there was something else like genre like was was Catherine Waterston just cast in a genre movie? Was she? I'm telling you, like there was some, there was some other like casting news that crossed my eye. And I'm like, how did I not know that or like cover that more oh no it was the it's the fear street casting that's what it is oh fear street, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, fear street prom queen uh loaded yeah. up its ensemble and it's got uh, speaking of, of lily taylor she's in that chris klein yeah. Catherine waterston i mean i'm really chris excited klein. again to see some like newer people in that too but like when people that i know and trust attach themselves to projects like that it makes me very excited i, I didn't actually know chris klein got cast in it i, I did see sorry I'm just pulling up now yeah, Chris. This yeah. Is... yeah, no, that's good. Yum, yum. Good stuff here. Oh, that's great. Um, okay. I, I, I saw the water stand and I saw the tailor, but I didn't see the client of it all. Yeah. That's hilarious. I'm just realizing my computer. I pulled a U, Matt. My computer wasn't pl plugged in. Oh, no. Why is that? Yeah, so my, I wouldn't, my, I didn't even have to plug mine in. I could unplug mine now and it wouldn't even. Well, matter. yeah, I mean, I isn't that the beauty of having a new one? Um, I want to make sure I didn't miss any little details in this final destination. I just like, mm -hmm. I can't wait to hear more about what that story is. Yeah. I also actually need to read the monkey. I don't think I've ever read the monkey. I wonder not. what book that's in. This is a short story, right? Yeah. Short story. Yes. Monkey Stephen King. I was just re-listening to life of Chuck for obvious reasons. I'm very excited about that movie. Yep. First published as a booklet included in gallery magazine. Mm. I need revised to read or listen to that, whatever an option is. Revised and published in Skeleton Crew. Mm, I will seek that out. Okay. Oh, a whole bunch of Devons. Um, do you both love Family Guy? I don't really watch very much Family Guy. Have you? I mean, I watched it religiously growing up. Uh, I want to say I got like, Jesus, how many seasons are they on now? A lot. I, yeah, well, that's what I'm trying to like think of when i stopped uh let's see i'm gonna say i made it i'm gonna, I'm gonna say i made it to season 10 i don't know if i've seen anything past season 10 it's a lot of seasons to have watched 
I, I mean, that was like that was when like DVDs were like getting super popular, and like there were a lot of TV shows being released on DVD. So like me and my friends would buy like every season of Family Guy, every season of this, that. Um, so like Family Family Guy was absolutely on rotation with my, with my guy friends, and like yeah, I, I I mean, I listen, I laughed a ton at it. I just kind of fell off of it, never came back to it. I think it, I I might have tried some of the newer stuff, and it does not work for me as well. Mm -hmm. let's say. Gotcha. Devin's next question is for me. Favorite Pixar movie? Excited for Inside Out 2. My favorite Pixar movie is Inside Out 1. I love Rat, that movie. Rats Tatooie. Rat Tatooie. Um, I think I, I think I'm like Inside Out. Number number two is is Wally. Wally was my number one before mm -hmm. Inside Out came out, and then Inside Out topped it. Inside Out is also one of those movies that I would go back in time and give a five out of five to if I could. Yeah, that's fair. Um, definitely Ratatouille first. Possibly Incredibles. Wally is all is obviously up there. Um, some kind of amalgamation of that. Maybe even just maybe Monsters Inc. If I'm being honest. Yeah, Monsters Inc. Toy is great. Toy Finding Story. Nemo. Yeah. There, I like. I fucking love Pixar. I mean, it's Pixar. They have few misses. Uh, yeah, really. I mean. Very few. I kind of, I kind of like Good Dinosaur. I think people are a little hard on Good Dinosaur. When, when the when the kid eats the berries and goes on that psychedelic drug trip, <laughs> literally, I'm watching this like kids movie, and all of a sudden a drug trip's happening, and I'm like, okay, wait, what? I still like it. I mean, I guess the only the only Pixar movies that I that I don't think are of the same quality, but I also do think they're really impressive, and like clearly they strike a chord with younger viewers as the Cars yeah. movies. Yeah, I, I mean, like honestly, I'm fine with the first cars. Uh, yeah, I do think the first cars is pretty funny, but that that is a little bit for a younger, younger crowd. That is true. Yes, um, I still just see Elemental. Uh, Lightyear oh, for me I, did not. I like Elemental. I didn't see that yet, but Lightyear is one of my misses. Uh, and it was whatever on it. I'm not gonna call Lightyear a miss. I definitely don't think it's as good as other Pixar movies, but it's like, like it's still a solid animated feature. It's just like when you're comparing it to Pixar's body of work where most things are like, great, great, great. It's going to pale in comparison. You know what though? Honestly, I I'm underestimating Coco. I think Coco might be my title. Like, like that actually might be a solid top three for me. Uh, Ratatouille, Ratatouille, Incredibles, Coco. It's a good list right there. I appreciate that. I'm trying to think of what I might be missing. I mean, like toy story is the classic. I, yeah. Well, of course. Yeah. Like those are all, I mean, like, I was never a huge of Bugs Life fan. Like it's good. Oh Obviously, yeah, I watched it, but like it didn't. Life. That one didn't have the staying power for me that like Monsters Inc. had. Encanto, Turning Red. Yep. They do. They're doing pretty damn well. Um, oh yeah. With with Elemental though, I really really like that movie, and I think it's an absolute stunner. And I think it's a very strong film, but I think they like introduced so much world that some parts felt a little thin and untapped, but. I guess that's just like the inevitable when you build such a rich world that I want to live in for hours and then you only give me like 90 minutes. <laughs> that's fair. Yeah. Shame on you for not making your movie 20 hours. I mean, like, I, I, I think it was a little under two hours, but yeah, yeah, like I would, I would very much watch like a 20 hour, like live in the world of Elemental or Inside Out. I mean, maybe Inside Out's building into a franchise that'll be that long for all I know. But I I'm mean, very like, excited anyway, for you. yeah, like you can play around with that concept of mm -hmm. emotions for, for days and days. Luke is great. Um, Soul is Soul. quite good. I did like Soul more than I, than I thought I would. I like Soul quite a bit. Um, what else do you want to talk about? Did you, oh, oh uh, you were going to review, uh, Winnie the Pooh, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey too. Oh, I mean, I mean, I can, I can review it quickly. I mean, like. How was it? Okay. Like, first of all, the first one is dog shit. Like the first one is so fucking bad. Um, it, it's, it's a bad movie. I'm sorry. It is an unwatchable, unfathomably, technically bad movie. Um, so. I mean, I say that. Yeah. They they did what they set out to do. They did, but not well by any means. It was borderline unwatchable. But that means there was only only room to go up from here. Um, and it, again, is Wayne the Pooh, Blood and Honey two a good movie? No. Is it way more fun this time at least? And does it actually like? It got way more budget. It went from like a hundred thousand dollars to like a million. 
And a lot of that money went to mm. fix things that I had the most problem with in the first movie, where yeah. like the first movie's death scenes, absolutely atrocious, mostly animated, mostly like not good for a slasher film. Uh, and the costumes did not work for me at all. Basically just rubber masks and people wearing like shirts and stuff. And it was, again, so bad. So with this movie, they have upgraded tremendously the costumes, number one. Like, the, the prosthetic work is, it, it is good. Like, it, it, we have a good slasher version of Winnie and, like, the whole gang, mm -hmm. finally. Um, and, like, the kill count's ridiculous. They, it is no shock that uh, Frank Waterfield took inspiration from Terrifier 2, and, like, he said it openly. He's like, yeah, I looked at Terrifier 2 for how I want to make the sequel. And that is what he brings this time. It is a massacre from start to finish. Kills are always mm -hmm. the priority and again, the practical is actually pretty damn fun. Um, the only problem is there's a lot of practical, but also a lot of digital because they still have to touch things up because they can't uh, learn practically. And that still looks awful, like fire, blood. There's a part where they have to di digitize hands coming out of a tunnel because they forgot to get the shot. So like, it just looks so bad. Um, the story doesn't matter. They basically try to retcon everything from the first movie. The first movie actually becomes... The first movie gets made into a movie in the movie's universe. Oh, wow. But they don't really play with that at all. And it's such a missed opportunity. Like, it's a throwaway gag when they could have done an entire, like, Scream 3 or New Nightmare yeah. thing. Yeah. And, like, that's a huge missed uh. opportunity for me. Um, so, basically, what they're doing with this is, like, they made the first movie. They struck gold without knowing they were going to. They come out with this whole idea for the Pooniverse, the fucking twisted Oy. childhood universe. And they just try to start over with Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey 2, which is a much better starting point from the first one. But it's still a messy fucking movie. Like, like I I struggle, again, with the technical elements across the board because, like, there's some performances that don't work. Uh, the dialogue for the killers, like, Tigger's in this movie. Mm -hmm. And he can speak. Like, the character, the monsters actually speak this time. And he just keeps calling everyone bitch over and over again. <laughs> like, like they just ran out immediately of like nefarious things to I say. Just see that where that's like a whole thing, like just calling someone bitch over and over. That like I, I did that as a bit in my fucking review because literally, like it's so fucking funny. Because you no, know, it's did you watch the Rick and Morty episode? Yeah, I think that's yeah. what I was just you, watching. You, watched the, you just said you were, you were like, rewatching Rick and sound, Morty. Why did that sound so familiar to me? Because it's Scary Terry. They did Scary Terry. <laughs> And it's so bad because, like, in Rick and Morty, they are making fun of something. In Winnie the Poop, Blood and the Honey, too, they just aren't creative enough to come up with any other catchphrases for Tigger beyond him right. calling the bitches. So, again, it's the bottom of the barrel of, like, a good slasher. But, again, it's a step up. It's it's better. It's it's much more pleasant to look at. As a slasher fan, you have plenty of kills. Uh, still not good, but passably entertaining if you're going to laugh at it with friends. Okay. So that's that's my takeaway. I'll take also, it. Also, just watch my video review on IGN. Or yeah. Review, so that that's... don't don't forget to scroll up and use that link that I dropped in the chat. Yeah. I'm trying to think of like what else I've watched recently. Clearly, I didn't see the big releases this week. I did watch um Dean Israelite's new movie Little Wing, and I thought it was I okay. thought it was lovely. Um, it's it's about pigeon racing, which. I think if anyone knows me, I'm I'm an animal lover. So the second I see something like that, I'm like, I want that. I want to do that. And one of the one of my favorite effects of that movie was that I watched it one night. I went into Manhattan the next day and I'm like looking at pigeons in a completely different way. That's fair. Yeah. I, I've not seen that yet. It's a it's like a very if you're looking for a, a, a like a good family friendly movie with a big old heart like that's. That's definitely a good one to turn to. I saw another question here. That was a good question that I wanted to see. Oh, this is the one yeah. that, that yeah, caught yeah, my eye. That. MK Songbird says, with Strange Darling finally getting a release date, any other film, any other festival films from last year that you were high on that still haven't found distribution? Matt, I was so happy and relieved when I saw that information. I'm like, do not just like sit on this movie. It's really really fucking good and i want the world to see it the other one that worries me though is um toxic avenger yeah i what, what, the, what I, the fuck are they doing what are they I doing i still don't think they know what the hell to do with it it's so I, but like so i i do understand it's you know trauma stuff can be a little kookier and harder to sell to a wider audience but that's not the case with this particular movie where it's led by peter dinklage and i think it does have a lot of like 
like ideas and things that, you know, people are appreciating right now in like bonkers, weird movies. It doesn't seem like that hard of a sell to me. It doesn't. And I still don't get the Fantastic Fest premiere because like they didn't use it for anything. They premiered it just to Literally put it out nothing. there. And they haven't done absolutely anything with any of the reactions. Because, like, it got generally good reactions. Like, yeah. based on, it played exactly where it needed to. It got the audience it needed to. And, like, they still didn't capitalize on it. So, I have, maybe it'll show up in October. I hope. I think it'll probably show up around. I hope. But, like, Halloween. whatever whatever they spent on promoting it late last <laughs> year, like, the value of that has, has fizzled. Oh, I mean, like, they, you know, they'll have, like, a positive rotten score at their back. But... Yeah. Like you could have, you could have like kept that wave going. Yeah, I'm trying to look at other one. Like, so, I don't know if this is. I don't think it has distribution. There was a movie I saw at Sundance virtually like two or three years ago called One for the Road. Hmm, I didn't uh, see that. And and it's what'd you say? I didn't see that one. It's I th I think it's Thai. I think it's Taiwanese. No, Thai yeah, it is. It is. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a Thai film, um, and it's basically about like a guy gets diagnosed with cancer and him and his friend go kind of relive their life by like trying it, it's them like going back and reliving their entire friendship uh through trying drinks and reliving those memories um and it's i, I actually enjoyed it i enjoyed it a good deal and i wish um, it had distro i don't know if it wound up getting u.s distribution it's but not Wiki distro, wikipedia but not does say it was the thai entry for best international feature at the 95th academy awards so that's the thing it doesn't it, it never got u.s distribution it's just gotten mm -hmm. that i haven't seen mm -hmm. it yet but yeah one for the road is actually like it's really deep and emotional and like it but it's also very funny and it's also very like it just makes you feel things again and as a as a drinker and a, like who likes to go to bars and hang out with people and like that communal environment like there's something special about like going back and making these drinks and having them unlock memories. Like it's, it's very nice. Of everything you saw at South by this year, what are you most eagerly awaiting distribution news for? That's a good question. Let me pull up my letterbox really quickly. Um, Cause my dead friend Zoe does not have anything. No, yet, I right? mean my dead friend Zoe a hundred percent. That is that, that was my, we talked about it. That's my favorite. Yeah. Festival. Um, that doesn't have it. Does Sotorn have? Not that I know of. Well, someone I mean, should, it, someone should snatch that up fast. It's Focus. I don't know if Focus is or Focus Searchlight or something. It, really? Yeah, like they're. I think they're selling it. I sw I swear to God that it got purchased by them for like maybe just selling rights. Um, the, only, the only Focus features film I knew of at um at Sundance was DD, which is great, and it's coming out this summer. Yeah. I, I forget where I saw it. Like it's it's in his bio that it says like I'm looking it up right now. In where Freddie's bio? The director? Yeah. Yeah, sir. Uh blah, blah, blah. his AFI admission short, uh, so torn was executive produced by Peter Spears and was acquired by Searchlight Pictures. Short. Oh, it's not fucking feature. short. There you Just go. It doesn't have distribution and well, there you go. Not not that I think um a whole, a whole lot of distributors are watching Mary Hour, but if yeah. anyone out there is, like, jump on that. I think jump on that and get in the Freddie McDonald business ASAP. Yeah, I don't. I, I know the gutter doesn't have distribution. Yeah, and I, I think, I think a lot of people are going to be afraid to release the gutter because of what it is. Mm -hmm. But somebody will do it, and I, they're going to be very happy when they do. I think the reaction to the gutter is going to be very good. Um, just looking down my list of things I saw. Time Stalker's another one. I that one does not have distribution, and I think that's going to go somewhere indie, and that's fine. That's where it, it should go. Um, but Time Stalker again, it's it's going to be one of those real like. It's not going to be everyone's favorite movie by any chance, but mm -hmm. it's going to be a lot. Like it's going to be a small group of people's favorite fucking movie, and they're going to go really hard for yeah. it. Yeah, I'm going to predict that. Well, sometimes that's all you need. Um, yeah. I'm trying to think of other ones. I think Babes Babes has distribution yeah babe says distribution asriel i'd like to see asriel get picked up oh that doesn't have distro yet yeah. no i don't think so um you know who's like really crushing it right now ifc like what a yeah. what a fucking lineup my god they i mean they they picked up one of my favorite movies of sundance and ghost light and then oh ghost light yeah, what, yeah. what did they bring to south by like oddity is definitely theirs anything shutters basically ifc yeah and, and um 
Arcadian is theirs. I don't know. And like they they just had all that success with late night with the devil. I just yeah. I feel I feel like we need to we need to give more respect to IFC. Yeah, no, I IFC has always been solid. I mean, like listen, we, they, do. we do, but yeah, we do. I've been reviewing wider, IFC. Wider yeah, rate. I've been giving IFC its credit since you know I started, especially being in New York. Like you know they're out there and like that's I, I you know just being right there and going to IFC theater and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So like. It's been always cool, but yeah, no, they like they'll have really good movies, and then like sometimes, obviously, they'll have their the balance is always there. But I think their good stuff is always like even the Midnighters, like God, like Devil's Candy. Like there was a yeah. there was a year where they like Devil's crushed Candy's it. Great. Like there was the, like that year of the Devil's Can uh, Devil's Candy was like was like 2015. Yeah, they had a bunch of movies that I was just like obsessed with. I think that might have been Pie Wacky. Yeah, I think that might. Oh been yeah, Pie Wacky, it's great. Yeah. Um. That I, country. I, I, very into devil's candy though like i obsessed oh, yeah. I, I must have watched that movie like 10 times yeah so they, they did pretty good yeah uh, it was pretty good are there any other questions that have caught your eye <laughs> everyone keeps asking about the pooniverse oh i hate I, that like, name it's, it, I hate that name i mean it, it's called the twisted childhood universe like that is technically what, what it i is. hate that too i mean because that's what it is they're taking each word twice i feel so strongly against this because Pooniverse is the twisted it, child universe. Yeah, right. We did not sure make that, that a thing. <laughs> the TCU. Oh God. I they're they're playing off my, like they're trying to make a joke out of. The I MCU. get yeah. But like <laughs> it's not that funny. Yeah, the twi the twisted childhood universe. <laughs> Amelia just mm. stop saying poon on the internet. <laughs> the heck. Yeah, it, Jack and Ed Productions. They're they're gonna go through it all. Um, Bambi <laughs> the Reckoning, Peter Pan's Neverland Nightmare, <laughs> Nokia Unstrung, Pooniverse Monsters Assemble. Stop saying it. <laughs> it's what it's the fucking name. I'm sorry, I, I can't. I know it's what it is. Um, and Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey Three is already been announced. Oh. So. Yeah, that I heard. That I heard. I mean, I I'm, I'll probably wind up watching Blood and Honey Two at some point at home. It's just it, again, it, if you liked Terrifier Two, it's that, but worse, but still better than the. Yeah, I don't know. Whatever. It's a fucking movie. <laughs> it's a movie. It's a movie. Oy, um, what are you covering next week, Matt? Anything you can share with us? What am I doing next week? That's a good question. Um, I, I can't like tell I anyone anything I'm doing next week, so this is all you. My, um, well, I know it, it, I laughed because, like, <laughs> the universe for my birthday gave me spider horror movies. I don't really like spiders. I'm not a spider guy. I don't really, I, I get creeped out really easily by spiders. But there are two movies. Shutter has Infested coming out. Which oh, is really, really I need to watch good. that. Like that got really good reviews at uh, Fantastic Fest. Like legitimately very scary spider horror. Um, and then there's one called Sting, which is about a girl who befriends an alien spider that gets bigger and oh. bigger and bigger. And so basically, what happens is like the, the the apartment complex has to has to basically defeat the spider in the apartment complex and like. My friend kind of described it as the blob a little bit, like in the sense mm. the community comes together and has to defeat a spider. Um, so like I gotta cover those. I gotta cover there's some there's some other shutter stuff. Uh Baghead comes out next week, which mm. is just again just a shutter at horror release. So I'll I shall report back there. But yeah, I really wanna the new guy Richie movie, I hope I get some pull on. Uh, I would like I would like to handle that. Um, because I love get I love me my guy Richie and it looks it looks fun. Not gonna lie about that. I I think so. I don't know. I, I mean, a Guy Ritchie movie is always a toss up for me, but like, I did not mind the last Statham one with the Statham Aubrey Plaza. Um, uh, the one that got delayed like three years. I'm blanking on the oh, name. Oh, um, Operation Fortune. Yeah. 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 I'm surprised I remember that. Like, I actually, I had fun with it. Like, I, like, I'm a, I'm a sucker for Guy Ritchie's like wit and style. Like, that's, that is what I want to see in my action movies. So mm. he has a lot, he gets a lot more credit for me than I think than other people. I can't believe it's April. I'm like, oh, I'm just Monkey, like looking Monkey up Man. other. Yeah, Mon Monkey Man is is coming out. I mean, we've seen we've seen it already. So like, yeah, I mean, we we fall on opposite sides of of the divide on that one. But but then again, I did teeter kind of positive. But yeah, yeah I, I I teeter positive. I'm I'm fine saying that. I actually I would I wouldn't say I teetered. I liked it. I liked Monkey Man. I think it's sloppy in the middle. Um, but I think you know the action is good and he has. He has a lot of heart and fire in this. Yeah. Like, you know, Dev really brings everything to it. And that is why it also struggles at times, but Yeah. I, I do feel like that heart and fire is what is what 
pushed me positive on it. Yeah. I, like I could feel that and that's infectious. And I do think yeah. sometimes that really elevates material, but I thought the, the action sequences in monkey man were like downright exceptional. And yeah. then while I thought the story was really interesting, I, I didn't think it was assembled in the most effective way. So yeah, that, that's kind of why I knocked it down a couple of points in my review. Um, oh, I just want to see first omen next week. So I will be seeing the first omen next week and we I can talk about that. I look for, I don't know if we're going to be able to do an episode next week. Oh, well, sorry. Yes. Based on when, when we can talk. Yeah. About the first I need to, I need to math that out and figure out if it's possible, but you can bet if it's possible, I'm going to do it. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm fine with it. Um, and then let's see. Par Abigail. I really want to see parachute. That one is, um, oh. Brittany Snow's feature directorial debut and it stars oh, yeah, Gordon yeah. Eaton, who I love from yellow jacket. Right. So I've, I've had my eye on that one for a while and just keep missing any screening opportunity I have. Yeah, I got to start. I, this is just me talking out loud and inside baseball. I got to start pitching Collider on some stuff. I want to start doing some more other stuff. See if that goes. I like that idea. I like that idea quite a bit. I also want to see the greatest hits. I was sad to have missed that at um at South by, and I like Lucy Boynton, so I want yeah. To see that movie. The I was I was curious about how they would carry that story out. Let's say. Mm -hmm. Um, and most of the reactions of people I talked to were kind of like, yeah, it does not work. Oh, <laughs> so that's like, a bummer. Yeah, like that. I, I had it on my list for South by and then I kind of just like threw it to the side after a bunch of people saw it that I trust. And mm. we're like, oh, well, oh, well, sometimes it happens. Um, in case anybody doesn't know, the story is a love story centering on the connection between music and memory and how they transport us sometimes literally. I'll give a I'll give a uh, another uh film with a, a heavy musical component a little shout out you didn't see music at Saturday, i did not know right comes out next week or this week um it doesn't come out this week i think it's the week after oh. let me just like make sure before i say yeah. something stupid that's not accurate um I, I always love when i search the release date and it gives me the south by date i'm like no that's yeah, not what that's, i want right. it's a prime video release oh it's on april 4th it is um right. I thought that was extremely well done. I mean, there's, you know, there's like certain elements of it that I think could have, could have been a bit stronger, but I re I really do think Rudy Mancuso has like everything and then some that it takes to be a really successful director. Like you could see all over this movie that like, like dude has an eye and a unique, um a unique viewpoint and a, and like a unique visual style that I think makes him really exciting behind the lens. But he, um I hope I pronounced this right. He was diagnosed with synesthesia. Um, and in the movie, it's I'm going to do a piss poor job of explaining this, but it's it's about how like things he sees in everyday life can like spark rhythms. And it's it's like a really interesting condition that I feel like is really difficult to convey via film to someone who doesn't have it, where like they might be able to like feel what he feels and hear what he hears, see what he sees. And like, I can't imagine him getting any closer to achieving that than what he does do with the movie. So, I, and it's got a friggin' phenomenal one Matt. I'm obsessed with the one in the movie. I'll give it a try. Like, again, I'll, I, people are liking it, so I'll definitely give it a try. I want to see it. Yeah, um, I think it's quite good. There's a movie. Did you see Riddle of Fire ever? I did see Riddle of Fire. I like Riddle like of Fire. It. Yeah. I, so I, I've missed it. So I, I do want to catch up with that one. I, th I think, you know, it's going to be for for some and not others. I guess all movies are. So what's the point? What's the point in saying that? But yeah. it's um like it's a, like a very like whimsical fantasy movie that I think some will be very eager to get on board with. OK, but if you like like if you're not into it at the beginning, <laughs> it's like one of yeah, those things yeah. that I, I don't like. Yeah, it's either going to be for you or it's not. But like that director oh my god i can't believe i can't recall his name right now over oh, on real of fire i have the yeah I have and I, I i i spoke to him and he was like he was great like he's a he's another one with like a really distinct eye and a and a ex, exciting things that like drives him in terms of storytelling that really excite that Weston that really Rizzoli. what R riddle of fire written and directed by weston Rizzoli. oh weston yeah um but I think he's like, he's another one that I think has the capability to go far. Huh? And, you know, like when you look at first time feature filmmakers, I'm always curious to see if they level up budget wise. Not that that's necessary. It's just a choice that they make. But 
he is like riddle of fire was was made with minimal resources and i think he excels in that particular yeah. sector so I'm, i am curious to do to see what he could do with a bigger budget but i don't know if that's the route he will choose yeah um i like i like arrow maxwell's 355 Every, like just mentioning Roadhouse in our discussion, oh. they, they enjoyed it. But I like the part about minus the honeycomb gremlin. He was terrible at every scene. I'm honeycomb glad the honeycomb gremlin, gremlin is catching on. I'm quite excited for like... Abigail. And lots of Fall Guy love. Oh, yeah, Fall Guy was great. I yes, had, had a good time with Fall Guy. I love Fall Guy. All right, Matt, ready to wind this down? Yep, I'm good. Give me other. So, like, we have we've definitely. I'm gonna just do this one more time because I want everybody to watch your, your blood and honey review. So I'm going to steal your promo for that. So while I share that review with everybody watching, tell us something else you worked on you're proud of and you want them to check out. Uh, that was a good question. Um, I'm, <laughs> I mean, I guess just the fact that I'm finally done with all my South by shit. And I know like, yeah. that, it's funny, but like that's, that took a lot. So like, I'm very proud of what I did for South by uh, eight, like I said, 18 reviews, a bunch of sites I want to yeah. write for forever. So like, yeah, if you still want to see some or read up on some of my past stuff, like that's fine. Also, I'm randomly like, there's a little talk about fad footage before. Uh, there's a found footage horror festival going on this weekend in San oh, Francisco. Oh, I heard about that. Yeah, like I would like to get out there eventually, but um, I'm covering it virtually. So like for Bloody Disgusting, you might see some reviews for me if I like things. Uh, I don't say that to be a dick, but like I, I tried to cover it last year and I wrote one review out of seven movies. So um, I hoped for a better ratio this year. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, we have one last super chat. Uh, put this towards a 7-Eleven hot dog sparkling water taste. I'll fucking do it if it's real. <laughs> uh, okay, sure. That'll be a Matt thing. Um, I'm not done with my South by stuff yet. Uh, my last South by interview will go up on Monday for Musica because it was week of release. So I held yeah. it. But yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll be that'll be my last one, and then I'll be done with uh, the twenty South by interviews that I conducted. I'm trying no. to think of like anything else I have to promote other than South by, and like I kind of don't. But go on the Collider Interviews YouTube channel because there is nineteen interviews I conducted available to watch over there. And if you go and watch them, give them a like, maybe drop a comment in there. That'd be really cool. So go do that, and then. Have a great weekend, and we will let you know what we figure out for next week, but it will likely be at a very interesting time, and I'm curious to tell you if... I don't I don't know if I can tell you the reason why, but you might find out soon enough. Just All right. Oh, <laughs> and that, hold on. The, someone mentioned the Godzilla hot sauce. That oh. will happen once we're in person. The yes. next time we are in person, I will do it, but you will that will be for a little while. <laughs> you will do it. I might not do it. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We got, we got time. Edge of your seats. Um, with that, have a wonderful weekend, everyone. We will see you soon. Goodbye. Bye.